why is it that one partner keeps on getting attracted to someone all the time so let's talk about fighting attraction so you are attracted you don't want to and yet mm. you just somehow you know you don't know what to do you you know the need is so strong the impulse is so strong, strong. so why does that happen again the answer is radical but it is true that um, you know promiscuity or you know uh, to 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 be attracted to um people while you are with someone and and it keeps on happening for you and you want to stop it and it doesn't stop tells you that you know there is a part of you who constantly wants to also enjoy the life that you have built in the fantasy world with the other person which means you are not in the now you know you cannot enjoy this relationship that you have even if you do you want to hide a part of you basically a uh, a huge part of you is not present here as a result oh of God. which you constantly want that um you know dopamine rush like how you get when you post a picture so there is Instagram something very seriously missing in your current relationship yeah or something yes. that you're not yes. studying yeah so again it's 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 not about it's not about the couple it's not about the relationship it's about the missing void in the person's life many times this in missing void goes back to childhood where they did not get adequate enough attention and care from their primary caretakers which is a mother basically partner who's cheated on as a lover what kind of psychology i mean of course you mentioned about feeling young so uh, what about guilt what about being found out what about hmm. those things yeah i mean um uh, well when you say lover um i would assume it's the same thing uh spouse again is an institutionalized term because of marriage mm. but even with lovers i think um people do it uh, not only for the thrill but um there is something behind the thrill which is this rush basically something to fill it up you know it's like um it's yeah, like the void. You, yeah the void it's it's like you know you you know that you work out you know that you do good exercise and and you eat healthy throughout the day at the end of the day when you're just about to sleep you know you know that there's a packet of sneakers in your uh, or or a bar <laughs> one in your refrigerator and your mind keeps on going there and you tell yourself that you know i have exercised throughout the whole day i've eaten like really good fruits and vegetables i'm not supposed to go there but then it keeps taking you there it's the same psychology <laughs> the same psychology if somebody who comes to you who yeah, has yeah. been you know uh, cheated upon so what mm. are the stages of actually healing and how does one do that okay i think what happens most of the time is people want to simply reconcile uh, forget and because if they want to be in the relationship by the way so then they want to reconcile forget immediately and i tell them that that's not possible because if you forgive uh, prematurely so it will be a premature forgiving and this will find repetition again in the form of deep anger we have to understand that the breaking of a relationship is uh, analogous to death there is no other analogy right so all the five stages of despair is going to show up even here as well wherein they will go through you know um deep amount of unacceptance in the beginning and then there will be a lot of anger expressed then they will go through uh, depression then they will go through bargaining that you know if this would have happened that would not have happened if i would have done this she would have not done this if i would have done this he would have not done that so bargaining is the oh my step god and, and most people remain in the bargaining because it's a question of self worth about it's about i could have prevented it you know and then comes acceptance wherein very few people cross over and see that it was not about me he or she brought it into the picture because he or she was carrying certain traits behaviors ideas attitudes and traumas from his family that that stage is not reached by many people Let's look at what are the things that you bring in from your family that stops you from having a partner who could value you the way you want oh my so god so then they then their focus is diverted from 
uh, attracting men in their life who would not value them, abuse them, break their trust to understanding, oh, there are certain family traits and behaviors I carry. This is the image of men my mother has. This is the image of men my aunt has. This is how a woman should be that I have understood from unconsciously, unknowingly from following my aunt, following my mom. But I can break them now that I'm aware of it. So that's when they, the focus is shifted from, oh, he is this and he is that and she is this and she is that to, okay, let's look at what, ha what has this event opened up in me? And, and then we do the journey from there. Um, yeah, uh, so what happens is, as I said, sometimes people become aware of what was not talked about, what was lacking and what was not acknowledged within the relationship. Um, and both parties uh, agree to that. That's something that happens. Secondly, uh, uh, you know, as I said, that there could be a, a, a trauma within the couple, like an abortion or a miscarriage or, um, or, or, you know, the birth of a child and the child dying. Those things were never talked about, never acknowledged, and the grief was never expressed. And, mm -hmm. and this could be an opportunity even if in anger and screaming and all of that, it could be an opportunity for the couple for the couple to see that what initially caused the break. You know, when 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 the spouse with which the child is comes to us, we tell them that um, even though you don't like the person today, even though you have decided to mm -hmm. you know uh, separate and break the bond, yet you cannot prevent the fact that the other person continues to be their father, continues to be their mother. So uh, the more you tell this child about how bad that person is and how abusive that person is and how that person, you know, cannot be trusted and everything, the child will imbibe all of those qualities later in life because that's the information yes. you are giving. So instead of that, go back to why you had loved this person in the first place. Because there will be things that were positive about this person. Otherwise, you wouldn't have been with them for whatever number of months or years you had been. So um, tell the child how, how, how those qualities attracted you to them. Mm -hmm. Tell the child about the good qualities that were present instead of telling how painful you feel. Keep yes. your business to yourself. Yes. And don't, oh, that's... don't spill your business to the child. Okay, are we suggesting that we need to legalize polyamorous relationships? Because I think we spoke about it being biological, yeah. right? So that's right. the question that's come. I, I mean, I, I don't think I have an opinion to for it because I don't know what people will achieve by doing that. Mm -hmm. I, I truly don't know what people will achieve by doing that. Except for the fact that uh, if children do come out of those relationships, uh, given that these two relationships are, uh, um, you know, heterosexual relationships, if they are, uh, then I don't know what kind of confusion will be created in those children's minds. That's one thing. Mm -hmm. If they are not heterosexual relationships, but homosexual relationships, then I also don't know how, um, how thick or thin people will be able to spread themselves when they are with multiple people at the same time. And what kind of emotional toll will it take in their, in their bodies and in their minds? So, when should you not continue the relationship? So, the last part of you know the thing was that how to forgive, but when do you know that you can't forgive anymore, that you have to move away? So, how does one kind of understand that, uh, you know, that line? My, my, my simple answer is if it happens more than once. Okay. Yeah, if it happens more than once, ask them. Uh, ask if they would like to seek therapy together. Um, and if they are not doing that, then uh, I think you should you should leave, because what is going to happen is even though they are doing it because whatever they carry from their families, from their own dynamics, yet they will have to have a personal sense of responsibility towards the relationship. Mm. If they do not have it, and if they are unwilling to work on it, then there's no point. They, they will first of all have an objective attitude towards it. They will be objective. They will not be biased, number one. Number two, they will have years and years of experience of intervention-based methods, ways and techniques and procedures to help the couple, right? Because they have gone through a training to do this. So um, that's the reason why the outside is essential. Most importantly, it's essential so that the couple 
feels free enough to talk about anything under the sun uh, uh, to the expert because um, they can't speak certain things to their friends and in their family because well they feel judged not by the person but by their their own self